Chapter 8 of the Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. This is a Discerning Hearts recording read by Corey Webb. Chapter 8 How to Effect This Second Purification The first inducement to attain this second purification is a keen and lively apprehension of the great evils resulting from sin, by means of which we acquire a deep, hearty contrition. For just as contrition, so far as it is real, however slight, when joined to the virtue of the sacraments, purges away sin, so when it becomes strong and urgent, it purges away all the affections which cling around habits of sin. A moderate, slight hatred makes men dislike its object and avoid its society. But when a violent, mortal hatred exists, they not only abhor and shun the person who excites it, but they loathe him. They cannot endure the approach of his relations or connections, nor even his likeness or anything that concerns him. Just so, when a penitent only hates sin through a weakly, although real contrition, he will resolve to avoid overt acts of sin. But when his contrition is strong and hearty, he will not merely abhor sin, but every affection, every link, and tendency to sin. Therefore, my daughter, it behooves us to kindle our contrition and repentance as much as we possibly can, so that it may reach even to the very smallest appearance of sin. Thus, it was that the Magdalene, when converted, so entirely lost all taste for her past sin and its pleasures, that she never again cast back one thought upon them. And David declared that he hated not only sin itself, but every path and way which led thereto. This it is which is that renewing of soul, which the same prophet compares to the eagle's strength. Now, in order to attain this fear and this contrition, you must use the following meditations carefully. For if you practice them steadfastly, they, by God's grace, will root out both sin and its affections from your heart. It is to that end that I have prepared them. Do you use them once after another, in the order in which they come, only taking one each day and using that as early as possible, for the morning is the best time for all spiritual exercises, and then you will ponder and ruminate it through the day. If you have not as yet been taught how to meditate, you will find instructions to that purpose in the second part.